It's about 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. And I come out here, almost all the sheep are on their bellies chewing their cud. And I'm looking for Rami. I'm like, Rami, Rami, where are you? He was all the way over there um, munching on grass like a boss. Right, Rami? And then he finally heard my voice and he came running for me. Right, is that what happened? Looks like he probably slept in the in the dirt. Got a little dirty on the side there. But I'm not seeing any negative behaviors on the part of the dogs. The only thing is that uh, when I start feeding Rami, they'd like to get a lick of the milk. So maybe they're hungry, let me go check their food. The grass here is super awesome. I wanted to see if I got any new lambs too, but I don't see any. So I assume all is well in that department. Mamas are still busy making babies inside of their bellies. Eating probably more than twice as much as they normally eat, I don't know. You know, I just sure hope that the sheep are not touching the dog food. And from what I can tell, that seems to be the case. You know. So there's still water on the ground. Two days after that rainstorm, the ground is still absorbing water, but I, I think the ground is probably at its limit. It'll probably take a, a whole year of water on the surface to reach down any further. Um, my brother, he said uh, the year before I moved down here to Texas, it was really wet. It was so wet they couldn't even mow their lawn. Um, and then by the time it got dry enough, they could go outside without sinking into the mud. The grass was already uh, at least four feet tall. So... They had really, really wet conditions uh, back in 2019 to 2020, apparently. So I'm going to check the dog food. Looks like there's plenty of dog food. Yeah, there's more than enough dog food. Let's go check the water in the, in the mineral block. I hear the fence shorting out here. It's probably just some grass. I need to go through and find all the faults in the fence again. I did the eastern fence and the southern fence. I need to do the northern fence and the western fence. The western fence tend not, tends not to have as many problems, probably because there's not trees and bushes growing along this side. So, now I was thinking about this. Uh, trees are important, but there's certain places you don't want trees, and one of those places is along the fence line. Although it does kind of create a natural hedge. Um, I think it's just more problems than it's worth. I'd rather have pockets of trees spread out across my land um, so that in the summer I can graze the whole field and not worry about shade. Yeah, the water's just fine. Whenever I move the water, I dump it out and get new fresh water. And uh, yeah, the water's just looking just fine. Can't get much cleaner than that, not on a pasture. And then there's the mineral block. We put it out fresh yesterday evening. And already you can see the corners are worn away. Um, it's uh, designed for all animals in the pasture, but, it's, but uh, this is one of the few minerals I can feed sheep without worry. So this is what the bulls will have to do. Um, they might be missing a few minerals, but so I'm worried about the toxicity towards sheep. Eventually, I'd like to get to the point where uh, the animals don't want minerals anymore because they're getting everything from the grass and the weeds. More so the sheep and the, the cows. So, yeah, I'm seeing lots and lots of grass. Let's see, we moved yesterday, yesterday, Tuesday evening. So three days. So th this evening would be one day. Tomorrow evening would be two days. The third day would be Friday evening. We'll probably move Saturday morning, three and a half days. Make everything line up on the weeks. So. This is what, this is a little bit taller than what a manure patty should look like. But that's, those are good manure patties. That means that the bulls are not getting too much protein. And they definitely don't have worms. are good patties. 
This is a new patty, and I think that's an old patty. Let me kick this one apart. It's probably just dirt. Yeah, look at that, just dirt. Just dirt, just pure dirt. If you're wondering where dirt comes from, it comes out of a cow's butt. You know, I guess I should say soil versus dirt. Dirt is like the uh, uh, geology. That's the chemicals that make up the soil. And then the soil is the geology plus the biology. Once you get living things in the soil, in the dirt, then it becomes soil. But otherwise it's just dirt. And the, um, the secret of soil is to leave it alone. Let it do its thing. It's a living organism. Um, every time we scratch it, we, we plow it or, or mess with it, we're damaging it. And the plants know what to do to create soil. And if you let them do their thing, they'll do it. The reason why you got weeds is uh, because the soil wants something different than what you want. Right? The soil says, I'm sick. I need these things. And so the weeds grow well. They're designed to restore the soil to balance. And if you keep uh, putting band-aids in on top of the sickness, the wound, and not treating the underlying, underlying cause, then you'll keep getting sicknesses, right? You gotta treat the underlying cause. Um, that's not to say there isn't a place for herbicides, pesticides, and things like that. The trick is you, you can't apply those things and ignore the soil health and expect good results, right? So, uh, Lots of people have success with uh, row cropping with reduced fertilizer, using cover crops and things like that. But that success doesn't come overnight. It's not like they suddenly decide, like, I'm not going to do anything to the soil and I'm going to plant corn and I'm going to get six foot tall corn. Are you not? The soil's not healthy. You can't support that. So, one of the ways to restore soil health is to bring animals on the pasture, let them graze and put their droppings down. Um, another way is to let it rest. The old European system, if you go back to the Middle Ages, uh, they were able to feed an entire continent with uh, manual labor, with barely any farm machines at all. And their secret was crop rotation. They would plant one thing one year, another thing the next year, then they'd put cows and sheep on it, and then they would just leave it alone, let it rest for a year. And uh, if you read in the Old Testament, uh, God's trying to explain to the Israelites how to grow their crops and he said you need to set aside one year and seven let the ground rest right I don't know if I'm gonna do that on my ranch I probably should just take like every seven years just take a farm and just say you're not gonna be grazed at all all year long um, you know but stockpiling is a good idea even in the short term um, rotational grazing like going on a piece of ground for a couple days and leaving and coming back three, six, ten weeks later, you know. That's all good. That works. Um, I think we're still discovering new things. Uh, people have been doing this rotational grazing thing for like 70 years now. I think they started back in the 50s in New Zealand. They started figuring this stuff out. But uh, we're still learning. There's all kinds of amazing things we're discovering and people are experimenting with some success, you know, sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. I, the more interesting thing to me is not the cutting edge of science, like what's possible and, you know, what secret combination of variables will give you the best results. I think what's more interesting is how can we uh, consistently reproduce those results um, so that the average person is able to access this amazing technology, right? Um, and I think uh, Greg Judy's system is pretty simple. It's not the only system, it's not the best system. It is a system. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, get his books. They're not that big. They're not that expensive. He'll explain a system, more or less. And then get out here, get your hands dirty, try some things out, see what happens. Uh, it'll make sense. Um, so my goals right now is just to increase the number of sheep, balance the sheep with the cows, get those two herds rotationally grazing so we can get six weeks um, in between the two herds. And uh, three weeks between the herds. And then uh, 
you know, hopefully the grass will be up to my armpits in early March. And I'll be complaining that I don't have enough animals to eat all the forage all year long. And the best part will be the fact that I could deliver meat at a very low cost, basically the only input being labor. And uh, hopefully it'll be a superior quality too. That's my goal is to really get good meat going using these techniques. You guys have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.